Item number, SCP-039. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. All instances of SCP-039 are to be contained in Site-77's Wilderness Observation Chamber 2B. At least two security personnel are to monitor the interior and exterior of SCP-039's chamber, and are to rotate every six hours. Staff members may not access SCP-039's chamber without an accompanying escort from site security, and may only do so for research purposes, or for the examination of the chamber for containment sabotage or contraband, which is to occur weekly. As of 9-18-20, SCP-039-8 has become pregnant. Responsibility for its containment has been reassigned to personnel in the veterinary observation wing. Description SCP-039 consists of 23 instances of Nasalus larvinus, or proboscis monkey, who have been subject to radical anatomical changes. The eyes and mouths of SCP-039 are absent, leaving the face bare save for the nose and its accompanying nasal passages. Instances of SCP-039 possess acute auditory and tactile sense to compensate for a lack of eyes, relying mostly on physical contact with objects to perceive them and on loud nasal snorts as a sort of echolocation to help them navigate in their environment. Necropsies have also revealed the digestive system to be absent. How instances of SCP-039 obtain nutrition, or alternately, how they survive without it, is still a subject of research. Instances of SCP-039 display signs of sapience, examples of which include communication via nasal snorts and understanding of spoken English and a complex understanding of machinery. Adult instances have demonstrated the ability to operate mechanical tools, and possess the ability to repair and manufacture various pieces of technology, such as disassembling and reassembling an internal combustion engine, and efficiently wiring a small apartment room. Testing has shown that SCP-039 appeared to work more efficiently individually, rather than in groups, as instances of SCP-039 will often become distracted by one another. Occasionally when working, instances of SCP-039 will clutch their abdomens and emit distressed vocalizations. If food is located nearby, they will attempt to smear their faces with the substance. It is currently hypothesized that this indicates that SCP-039 is the result of artificial manipulation of normal nasalis larvitus specimens, with documents recovered during containment supporting this hypothesis. SCP-039 are capable of reproduction and gestation not unlike Nasalus larvitus. As of the time of this writing, five instances of SCP-039 have been born. SCP-039 show a very close bond among their species, with newborns often being cared for by all capable adults. New instances are born with anatomical anomalies similar to other instances of SCP-039, but lack the knowledge of other instances. Parent instances will educate newborns on communication and basic skills until they reach the age of six months, at which point, technological ability will be taught by other adult instances. SCP-039 were recovered from an uninhabited research facility 50 kilometers from the nearby town of Nevada. Documents recovered during containment placed ownership of the facility under a company funding research for the advancement of natural human ability. Twenty instances of SCP-039 had been apparently living in and maintaining the facility for an unknown period of time. Additional recovered documents indicate that a project was being conducted to augment human intelligence. This project appears to have been cancelled shortly before the company's collapse, with the assets sold to an unnamed group. Further research into and the groups that acquired its assets has revealed several other anomalous objects, including SCP-1513. Addendum SCP-039-A One additional instance of SCP-039 was discovered during containment operations of SCP-1328. Agents are currently following up on any reports indicating the existence of further instances outside of containment. Addendum SCP-039-B Several documents recovered during initial containment appear to notate the early prototyping stage of SCP-039's development. Research has begun to develop a way to recreate the process that creates new SCP-039 instances. However, the damage the notes had accumulated prior to containment has rendered many of them unreadable. Documents SCP-039-1-16 through 16. 
removal, they have become almost 100% more productive, not even counting the extra time due to reduced breaks and time off. With this success, we're considering removal of additional orifices, as long as the replacements or lack thereof do not reduce their output. Werner was looking at them as they worked today, and noticed some of them clutching their abdomens. Seems that they experienced phantom hunger pains, even if they no longer require food. Unless this starts interfering with productivity, we're going to continue as is. We tried removing the ocular organs and just having them work by memory. After a couple of inconclusive trials, we actually got one up to the point where it scored almost as high as the control test. We've decided to move forward with this initiative, and if successful, apply it to all specimens. Edit. An update on this one. It seems the removal of sight has increased the tactile sensitivity of most of the specimens, and remarkably, this has brought the initial test subjects up to a level of productivity that exceeds the expected result. As such, we will be applying the changes to all available specimens. Some of them didn't take to it, but they're still good for spare parts. In the meantime, we've put them in storage. After the success of the eyeball thing, Damien suggested that we could increase productivity by increasing auditory sensitivity. As long as they stayed in the factory, they'd be fine, since there isn't much here to overwhelm the ears. Testing starts in a week or so. A massive success! With the elimination of sight and the need for food, and with the amplification of hearing and touch, we've managed a total boost of 211% over our initial test subjects. Management has seen fit to give our division extra time to finish the project. And to think that we were sold this project for a lark. Man, I feel like dancing on air. Edit. Small incident today. One of the specimens was out of his pen and had grabbed a couple of tools. We put him back in and sealed it up again. Alan says he'll take another look at the doors tomorrow. Item number. SCP-042. Object Class. Safe. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-042 is currently housed within Minimum Security Paddock 12 at Bio Research Area 32. Despite SCP-042's seeming disinclination to attempt escape at this point, security measures must still be maintained at all times. Previous attempts to maintain the health of the ground cover in Paddock 12 have failed to date. Despite regular watering, SCP-042's presence leaves the ground parched wherever it treads. As it has not been determined what happens to added water, the program of watering has been discontinued as unnecessary and potentially hazardous to the local water table. Monitoring of local well levels and sampling of the area's water is to be carried out on a weekly basis. Personnel interacting with SCP-042, including any handlers, medical personnel, feeders, and custodial staff, must submit to a thorough search, including prior to entrance into Paddock 12. Any personnel attempting to smuggle a weapon or an object which can be used as a weapon is to be immediately Personnel are to undergo psychological screening once per week after interacting in any way with SCP-042. Medical personnel examining the wounds on SCP-042's back are to be closely monitored at all times, lest they attempt to euthanize SCP-042. Description SCP-042 is an animal believed to be a member of the genus Equus. Its coat is white in color, with some small brown spotting. It stands at 183 centimeters, or 18 hands, to its withers, and weighs 710 kilograms. Its weight has dropped significantly since it has been in Foundation custody, due to both atrophy from lack of physical activity and refusal to eat. The liquid nutrient diet forcibly administered keeps it alive, but it remains emaciated and weak. SCP-042 exhibits two large bone protrusions from its back, linked to powerful musculature, now atrophied throughout its back. These bones end at 37 centimeters from the surface of its back, and they protrude from the skin at open, ragged wounds. To date, no healing has been observed of these wounds, though some clotting must be taking place for SCP-042 to have not bled out. SCP-042 exhibits a listless demeanor and has been unresponsive to any attempt by skilled handlers to incite activity. If allowed to do so, SCP-042 will lay down on the ground immobile, not moving to eat, drink, or relieve itself. Pain response conditioning has proved somewhat effective in getting SCP-042 to rise so that it can be cleaned, but eventually it will attempt to lay down again no matter the strength of the shock administered, even to the point of losing consciousness. Researchers are divided as to SCP-042's level of intelligence. 
While some believe that it is simply an animal and no smarter than others of its genus, others have come to believe that it may in fact be sapient. It has been shown to make eye contact with persons entering Paddock 12, most of whom describe its looks as pleading. SCP-042 has been involved in accidents on multiple occasions, where it has been injured on pieces of equipment or its enclosure, which those arguing for intelligence believe to have been intentionally caused by SCP-042. Addendum A request was submitted by Dr. P to transfer SCP-042 to Bioresearch Area 4 on 19 which was approved by 05-5. Dr. P altered transportation documents to indicate that SCP-042 was to be airlifted rather than transported by armed convoy. During transit, Dr. P overpowered the pilot of the transport aircraft and took the controls, plunging the craft into a steep dive. Passengers and cargo experienced nearly a minute of weightlessness before security personnel regained control of the aircraft and leveled off. As Dr. P was being bound and the plane landed, SCP-042 broke free of containment and kicked two security personnel to death in the cargo area. Cargo bay security footage shows that after this point, SCP-042 approached Dr. P and touched its muzzle to his face. Dr. P exhibited signs of euphoria while contact was maintained, but when additional security personnel subdued SCP-042 with tranquilizer darts and contact was broken, he collapsed into a catatonic state from which he did not recover. After a hearing concerning his actions, Dr. P was euthanized while under Foundation medical care on 19... Item Number SCP-074 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-074 is contained at Site-81. SCP-074 is an active info hazard. No research in evaluating its anomalous properties is to be conducted. All personnel who have previously engaged in research into SCP-074's anomalous properties must never come within 5 kilometers of SCP-074. SCP-074 is contained within a 6 meter by 6 meter by 3 meter reinforced glass chamber, filtered to block all ultraviolet light, and situated within a windowless room lit by monochromatic safe lights, which serve as secondary containment. A smaller containment chamber would significantly increase the probability of SCP-074 spontaneously breaching primary containment. The containment chamber is to be surrounded with scaffolds bearing sheets of live cultured human skin, held parallel to the surfaces of the containment chamber, and arranged overlapping each other such that lateral coverage is at least 95%. Skin sheets must be a minimum of 3 mm thick and warm to 37 degrees Celsius and must be grown from samples provided by D-Class personnel with no less than a middle school education and no more than a high school education. All skin sheets are to be examined on a daily basis for instances of SCP-074-1. All instances of SCP-074-1 are to be excised and incinerated. SCP-074 is to be fed 75 grams of fresh shredded apple leaves, genus Malice, bark, and fruit hydroponically grown to ensure lack of pollutants and foreign organisms, once a day, via a mechanical dispenser. In the event of a spontaneous containment breach, personnel can coerce SCP-074 into returning to its containment by first occupying each of its four sets of jaws with an entire raw apple, then physically pushing SCP-074 in the desired direction, gently tapping its compound eyes with an open palm, or spraying its front pair of antenna with a 0.5% solution of methanoic acid. Description SCP-074 is an anomalous organism which uses various quantum properties at a macroscopic scale and in other ways modifies the standard laws of physics within its immediate vicinity. The specific nature of these modifications appears to be linked to the extent to which humans in SCP-074's vicinity are aware of the precise details of the physical laws which SCP-074 modifies such that research to determine whether SCP-074 has a given property or capability results in SCP-074 developing or manifesting that property or capability. Archive 074-317-E, a full list of the anomalous physical phenomena known to be or to have been associated with SCP-074, is available to personnel level 3 or higher. Personnel who access this document will be disqualified from working with SCP-074 
or for any other reason coming within 5 kilometers of Site 81. SCP-074 has repeatedly manifested the ability to spontaneously materialize at locations as much as 3 meters outside its primary containment. This is believed to be, or to be analogous to, quantum tunneling. Foundation entomologists have tentatively identified SCP-074 as belonging to the order Isopoda, commonly known as a woodlouse. Its inertial mass is approximately 1,700 kilograms, but its gravitational mass is approximately 375 grams. Its volume has been estimated at 1.7 cubic meters, approximately the size of a compact car. SCP-074 is female, although it lacks the typical isopod marsupium, or brood pouch in which eggs are incubated, and parthenogenetic. Periodically, approximately 1.3 times per hour when SCP-074 is shielded from ultraviolet light, and approximately 29.2 times per hour when SCP-074 is exposed to unfiltered daylight, the globular organ at the tip of its ovipositor luminesces and emits what was originally thought to be a form of non-ionizing radiation, but which has since been identified as coherent wave packets of the probability of one of SCP-074's self-fertilized eggs, henceforth SCP-074-1, reifying, i.e. becoming a thing, spontaneously coming into existence. Personnel who properly understand the concept of wave packets are disqualified from working with SCP-074. Instances of SCP-074-1 preferentially reify and incubate within the flesh of humans with knowledge of physics. The rudimentary knowledge of physics which even poorly educated adult citizens of a technological civilization can acquire via cultural osmosis. For example, magnets can attract or repel each other, matter is made of atoms, light has a speed, appears to be sufficient. In the absence of suitable humans to serve as hosts, the wave packets will reify within other organisms or within inanimate objects. However, rather than incubating, the eggs will wither and die, leaving perforations similar to radiation damage at a macroscopic scale. The wave packets appear to decay over time, as no wave packets or instances of wave packet related damage have been detected at distances greater than approximately 400 meters from SCP-074. The rate at which successfully incubated instances of SCP-074-1 mature appears to be dependent on the host's exposure to ultraviolet light. Within a host exposed to an average of 30 minutes of unfiltered sunlight per day for a month, an instance of SCP-074-1 was observed to grow from 2 mg to 8 kg, at which point it was surgically excised and killed. Whereas, within a host totally isolated from natural light for a month, the three simultaneous instances reached sizes at excision of only 600 grams, 680 grams, and 710 grams. The complete developmental history and life cycle of SCP-074-1, including how they emerge from their host, and their size at emergence, is not yet known. Item Number SCP-075 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-075 is contained in a 1 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter level 4 corrosion resistant container which must be contained in a secure chamber with equal corrosion resistance. The absolute humidity of the chamber may not exceed 1% at any time. Medicinal grade desiccants must be available at all times in order to maintain this level of humidity. If the humidity of SCP-075's chamber ever exceeds 1%, all personnel are to be evacuated immediately and the site will be locked down until the humidity is reduced to acceptable levels. All personnel who enter SCP-075's containment chamber must wear MOPP Level 4 protection. Injection tests, as well as any test which involves an aqueous solution, are strictly forbidden. If any such solution comes into contact with SCP-075, the area will immediately be locked down and flooded with desiccant until the humidity is brought back to acceptable levels. Evacuation of personnel remaining in the area is prohibited. Description. SCP-075 resembles a large snail, 20 cm in length, 13 cm in width, and 15 cm in height, with a muscular foot resembling a six-fingered clawed hand. SCP-075 is exceptionally heavy, with a mass of approximately 860 kg, a property that is not understood. Desiccation is the only known means of containing SCP-075, as it will enter a dormant state when nearly completely dry. 
when not desiccated, SCP-075 moves at incredible speeds for its size and mass. It adopts the behavior of a predator, jumping at and drenching its prey in a highly caustic based solution secreted from pores on its foot. These secretions are more corrosive than any substance known to terrestrial science. Due to SCP-075's aggressive behavior when active, this compound cannot be harvested. No material completely resistant to its corrosive power has been found. Addendum 075-F Attempts to harvest SCP-075 secretions must be approved and supervised by all on-site Level 4 personnel. However, approval of said personnel cannot override the standing order to not introduce any liquid solution to SCP-075, including its own secretions. Addendum 075-G A cup of SCP-075 secretions was successfully harvested by using SCP-294. Testing is underway to determine what substances, if any, are immune to its corrosion. Testing is also underway to determine why the cup provided by SCP-294 is immune to the substance's effects. Item Number SCP-098 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Members of SCP-098 are to be kept in a 10 meter by 20 meter room with small pools of water and a sandy substrate. Rocks and driftwood are to be left in a random arrangement for SCP-098 to nest in. The enclosure is to be cleaned on a weekly basis. During this time, all members of SCP-098 are to be accounted for first, to prevent injury or death to personnel or SCP-098. Any members of SCP-098 that appear ill or injured are to be removed and examined. Description. SCP-098 is a species of previously unknown crustacean. They resemble crabs, but rather than keely, the front limbs terminate in knife-like structures that incorporate silica to form an extremely sharp edge. Specimens reach larger than normal for land-dwelling arthropods, at 40 centimeters tall and as large as 60 centimeters across. Specimens of SCP-098 prefer an environment with ready concealment and shallow pools of water. They are able to breathe both water and air, splitting their time between the two environments. They are also capable of vocalizations, using a larynx-like structure attached to primitive lungs. SCP-098 demonstrates pack hunting behavior when attacking prey. When specimens detect a prey animal, they will attempt to surround it. They will mimic the sounds made by the creature, apparently to confuse it or to draw it into position. When ready, one specimen will approach the prey animal. When its attention is fixed on the first specimen, other specimens will move behind the prey and attempt to cut the tendons of the legs or other limbs. They will continue to mimic the sounds the prey animal makes to disorient it. After making a cut, a specimen of SCP-098 will spit a viscous mucus over the wound. This substance hardens rapidly, preventing blood loss or infection. This continues until the prey animal is completely immobilized. At this point, specimens will begin to feed on the prey animal by cutting off small pieces of flesh. This begins with soft, readily accessible tissues, such as those of the face and extremities, before moving to other parts of the body. Specimens of SCP-098 will only feed so long as the prey animal is capable of respiration. Feeding can last several hours or several days, depending on the size of the prey animal and the number of specimens present. Specimens of SCP-098 show some ability to communicate, alerting each other to the presence of threats or potential food over short distances. It was initially thought that SCP-098 might display human-level intelligence, but are now believed to merely parrot human speech. SCP-098 normally poses little threat to adult humans, preferring smaller prey, such as dogs, cats, and small pigs. However, they have attacked larger prey when a sufficient number of specimens were present, or else other food was unavailable. SCP-098 was discovered in Brazil after a rash of child disappearances. Addendum 098-1 SCP-098 is more intelligent than previously thought. They adapt quickly to changes in their environment and have shown an ability to remember patterns, such as feeding and cleaning times, and habitual movement of personnel entering their enclosure. Cleaning personnel must ensure that they regularly vary their routes through the enclosure to prevent incidents. Dr. Mann has taught several of them simple tricks, 
and they seem to understand the meaning of several commands. Testing will continue. Item number, SCP-111. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. All specimens of SCP-111 in captivity are housed at Site-19 in a 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter plexiglass enclosure containing a temperate forest habitat transplanted from its natural surroundings. Habitat temperature will be maintained at 30 degrees Celsius. Feeding is to take place weekly by personnel placing 3 kilograms of iceberg lettuce into the containment chamber. Water is to be supplied by an automatic misting system which regulates humidity levels at 50%, both for water required by SCP-111 and to prevent fires. In event of SCP-111 specimens breeding, personnel are to collect all eggs and transport them to the biological studies wing for freezing. Description SCP-111 is an apparently artificial species of invertebrate vaguely resembling snails. Adult specimens of SCP-111 are approximately 20 cm in length, 12 cm in width, and 15 cm in height, although exact size differs slightly between specimens. SCP-111 specimens differ from ordinary snails in that they have a warm-blooded metabolism, complex eyes, small horns consisting of cartilage-ridged tentacles, apparently increased intelligence and a complex vertebrate-type jaw structure. As well, specimens lay eggs possessing hardened shells. Most abnormally, SCP-111 specimens possess small hollow sacs below their lower jaws containing methane from digestive byproducts. A series of data expunged along the inside of the trachea serves as a lighter, igniting stored methane as the specimen exhales, blowing a small jet of flame from its mouth. Said fire breathing generally occurs in event of stress or anger, although is not apparently used deliberately for destruction, but rather as a warning. This is presumably due to the limited size of methane sacs, which limits SCP-111 specimens in the amount of fire they can exhale at a time and requiring both time and starch-rich food to refuel. SCP-111's behavior is inconsistent with that of ordinary snail species, including whistling and hooting vocalizations, easily audible to humans, high intellect seen in such tests as data expunged, and parents caring for their young. Hatchlings have been observed imprinting on their parents, other members of their own species, or researchers. This is presumed to be a deliberate trait based on Document 111-A, as it means that hatchlings imprint upon owners. History On a package containing 12 SCP-111 eggs in Document 111-A was mailed to Data Expunged, a Foundation Front organization. Mobile Task Force Alpha-4 have proven unable to locate the sender of said package. Document 111-A New from Dr. Wondertainment Dragon Snails, the perfect pets for the fantasy-loving child. Care and Hatching Instructions 1. Having read this document, take the eggs out of the box. Be careful, dragon snail eggs are fragile. 2. Put the eggs in a warm, safe place and wait 7 to 10 days. 3. Hold your newly hatched dragon snails so they get a good look at you and think you're their mommy. 4. Enjoy your new pet dragon snails. To feed your dragon snails, give your new little friends some raw veggies. Lettuce, Brussels sprouts, beans, any sort of salad stuff you don't want. Remember to give them water, a small glass each, once a day. For your enjoyment, dragon snails come in six types. Breed them for unique pets. Types 1. Slimy Bellies Adorable and oozy little fellows, with awesome fire engine red colored skin, little black horns and belly, and a speckled tan shell. Beautiful robin's egg blue eggs. 2. Ooze Drakes Inquisitive little creatures, with neat banana colored skin, curly horns and striped shells. Pale tan eggs, like a chicken. 3. Goo Wyverns Dark blue gray skin flattened shells, and a bumpy horned head make goo wyverns look like tiny sea monsters. Eggs are a fantastic glassy green color. 4. Blob Worms Green and gold stripes, pointy shells, and a single horn, not to mention fuzzy tails, 
make blobworms wonderful pets. Eggs are tan with a silver tint. 5. Glow Drakes New from Dr. Wondertainment These little fellows may look like blue-black slimy bellies until they light up. That's right, glow drakes glow in the dark. Eggs are a golden color with little red dots. 6. Gunk Wyverns Chubby, green-skinned, and dome-shelled, gunk wyverns make great pets. Eggs are transparent, so you can see the baby dragon snail inside. Parental Notice As Dr. Wondertainment's dragon snails breathe fire, they have been known to cause house fires. For maximum playtime fun and safety, it is recommended that fire extinguishers be kept handy. Despite this, Dr. Wondertainment is not legally, morally, or financially responsible for any injuries, death, or property damage resulting from the unsafe use of dragon snails or any other Dr. Wondertainment products. By reading this document and incubating your dragon snail eggs, you agree to all said terms and forfeit your rights to lawsuits, organized boycotts, protests, honor duels, etc. Enjoy your purchase. Item Number SCP-131 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures No special safety procedures are to be taken with SCP-131-A and SCP-131-B. They are free to travel about Site-19 so long as they do not attempt to enter any restricted areas or attempt to leave the facility. Casual contact with the subjects is permitted, but it is recommended that such contact be kept to a minimum to prevent the creatures from forming an attachment to personnel. Hourly tabs are to be kept on subjects at all times. Failure to account for their presence at these times constitutes a level 1 lockdown situation. Any report of abuse or mistreatment of the subjects will result in a harsh reprimand. Description SCP-131-A and SCP-131-B, affectionately nicknamed the iPods by personnel, are a pair of teardrop-shaped creatures, roughly 30 centimeters or 1 foot in height, with a single blue eye in the middle of their bodies. SCP-131-A is burnt orange in color, while SCP-131-B is mustard yellow. At the base of each creature is a wheel-like protrusion which allows for locomotion suggesting that the creatures may be biomechanical in origin. The subjects can move surprisingly fast, covering over 60 meters, or 200 feet, in a matter of seconds. The subjects, however, lack a braking system, which has led to some rather spectacular, if not overly amusing, mishaps involving the creatures. The subjects have also shown the ability to climb sheer surfaces, and have gotten lost in the air vents on more than one occasion. The subjects seem to have the intelligence of common house cats, and are insatiably curious. Most of the time they simply roll around the facility, observing personnel at work and catching peeks at other safe class SCPs. The subjects seem to be able to communicate with each other via an untranslatable high-pitched babbling. The subjects have never been observed to blink, even in laboratories when the subjects have been videotaped for over 18 consecutive hours. The subjects seem to respond well to any affection given to them and will quickly bond to the giver of said affection, much in the same way a puppy bonds with a human being. They will follow anyone or anything they've made a bond with anywhere, even into normally restricted areas. Although curious, the subjects can sense danger in their general vicinity, and if the object of their bond begins to approach something they register as dangerous, for example Euclid or Keter-class objects, they will swarm around their bonded companion's feet or appropriate extremities while babbling in a panicked tone, as if to warn them. Because of the daily dangers faced by Site-19's staff in dealing with Euclid and Keter-class objects, it is recommended that staff avoid making attempts to bond with the subjects, as it can pose a distraction during delicate operations and experiments, and may pose a danger to the subjects themselves. If the subjects are ignored by their bonded target long enough, they will eventually lose interest and return to their normal activities. It should be noted that the subjects require no real care or maintenance from the site staff. They do not eat, leave droppings, or even sleep. It would seem that the only sustenance they require is visual stimulation, although this requires further study to verify. Subjects SCP-131-A and SCP-131-B were found in a cornfield outside in the year 19... They were promptly transported to Site-19 via data expunged and were then downgraded to safe class, and given free reign across the site once it became clear they were not broadcasting what they saw to any hostile foreign powers. Addendum 131-1 During an incident that took place on 
The subjects followed one of the cleaning staff on routine cleaning of the container of SCP-173. After their normal attempts to warn the cleaner of the danger were ignored, the creatures rushed into the container in front of him and the other two personnel on duty. Once inside, the staff members observed the subjects sitting in front of SCP-173 and watching it intently, as if aware that it could only move if unobserved. The cleaners ignored the presence of the subjects and continued with the bi-weekly cleaning, as per standard procedures. When the cleaning crew left, the subjects did as well, rolling backwards slowly and never taking their eyes off of SCP-173. Current applications of SCP-131-A and SCP-131-B as wardens for SCP-173, and perhaps other SCP which require constant observation, such as SCP-689, are being considered. Item Number SCP-149 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-149, in any of its instances, is to be kept inside a sealed plexiglass box for observation. Oxygen and a nutrient mist are to be released into the containment cell every two hours. If any instance of SCP-149 escapes its cell, Protocol 42 Charlie is to be brought into effect on any and all contaminated personnel by order of 0512 after Incident 149-1. Description SCP-149 is a breed of mosquito, which carries a strain of retrovirus, herein referred to as SCP-149-A, that mutates regenerating human cells into fertilized mosquito eggs. SCP-149-A is injected directly into the bloodstream when SCP-149 feeds. The SCP-149-A quickly works on the nucleus of the cells, warping the DNA. The first set of cells bred from these changed instructions closely resemble cysts and are concentrated in the lining of the esophagus and the sinuses. Upon dissection, however, these cysts are revealed to be filled with SCP-149's larva the cysts acting as a protective casing against external forces. SCP-149 appears to go through its maturation cycle in a matter of hours. By the time the subject is able to feel any effects, the first generation of SCP-149 has already grown inside the subject's body. SCP-149 primarily achieves exodus through the mouth and nostrils, occasionally being diverted through the sphenoid sinuses to escape through the eye sockets. Infection by SCP-149 is fatal, and chance of infection has been estimated to be 50% from one bite. Addendum Incident 149-1 An incidence of SCP-149 escaped and infected multiple Class D subjects, the majority of whom did not report SCP-149's contact with them. Within five hours, SCP-149 had matured in these hosts and burst out of them, infecting several staff members. It was only thanks to the quick thinking of Dr. who sealed sublevels 12 through 15 that the entire site was not infected. As a response to this, O5 Command has created Protocol 42 Charlie to be used if SCP-149 escapes confinement. Item Number SCP-165 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Housed in a facility at Armed Biocontainment Area 14, SCP-165 is to be treated as a contagious pathological organism. The highest sterilization and quarantine procedures are to be followed. Microwave field generators around SCP-165's area are in place to restrict movement of its dune within its containment area. Once every nine days, SCP-165 is fed live cattle weighing at least 750 kilograms. Description The organic component of SCP-165 resembles that of typical parasitic mites, 750 micrometers in length, with eight legs and a genetic structure similar to the house dust mite. The main difference is the hermit crab-like behavior of attaching grains of sand to its back. It is unknown what purpose the sand serves, but the massive colony of SCP-165 numbers into hundreds of billions to possibly trillions, creating a rather large dune. The similarities between data expunged 
and SCP-165 are only superficial. Data Expunged's colony is protozoan in nature, and apparently shows a collective intelligence and awareness that is not understood. SCP-165's colony is made up of individual Akari who don't show cooperation, but rather competition in the hunt for food. Like mosquitoes, they rely on chemical detection of carbon dioxide and sugars in the air to detect prey. The Akari mites roll and bound over one another toward prey, only using their legs to climb over one another. When in contact with the flesh of animals, they release a numbing chemical toxin in their bite, similar in makeup to that of mosquito and flea bite toxins. Subjects are typically unaware that millions of mites are taking turns at grabbing mouthfuls of its flesh as they swarm around their victim. A typical swarm resembles a swirling vortex around a victim or victim's appendage. The SCP-165 colony is efficient enough in their competitive swarming that most animals' appendages can be defleshed and reduced to bone within minutes. The numbing toxin is so effective that sleeping victims may not wake up as their limbs are being eaten away. The Akari mites are resistant to all but the most dangerous of pesticides. They retreat from heat and will often seek shade when available, being the most active during the night, hunting for large sleeping prey. Their vulnerability to heat is the most preferable technique for containment. Addendum Acquisition It is apparent that the US government has been aware of dunes of SCP-165 for some 80 years. The area where SCP-165 was found is a now forgotten German immigrant ghost town of Fredericksburg, Arizona, in the Tool Desert, near the Goldwater Air Force bombing range. The remote town of Fredericksburg was founded sometime in the late 1800s, and by 1908 had become a ghost town. A passing cavalry troop reported that the inhabitants had disappeared and that the buildings were empty. They attempted to stay one night in the abandoned hotel, only to have seven of their horses reduced to piles of bone. All but four of the soldiers fled in the middle of the night, saying that sand was filling the building like a flood of water. Those four were never seen again. During the late 1950s, the US military attempted to exterminate SCP-165 by turning the area into a bombing range. It was successful in reducing the numbers of SCP-165, but in the late 1980s, it became apparent that a ground cleanup and extraction was needed to remove the presence of SCP-165. Mobile Task Force Epsilon-9, aka Fire Eaters, were dispatched for containment and extraction of SCP-165. Upon entering the town of Fredericksburg, an upturned sign was found, reading, Beware the Creeping Hungry Sands. The flame accelerators of MTF Epsilon-9 proved highly successful in glassing the sand of SCP-165 and reducing its number to a manageable size. A living dune of nearly four metric tons of SCP-165 was contained and transported to ABC Area 14, where it is monitored and contained. Item Number SCP-169 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Because of its size, SCP-169 cannot and almost certainly will never be contained. No structure on Earth is large enough or strong enough to contain SCP-169. The location of SCP-169 is not precisely known, but imaging satellites and analyses of eccentricities in the Earth's orbit suggest SCP-169 is located in the Southern Atlantic Ocean, possibly stretching around the tip of South America. Any satellite footage of a shift in the landmasses produced by SCP-169 is to be excised and destroyed by embedded agents. Description SCP-169 is surmised to be a marine arthropod of enormous size, known as the Leviathan, by generations of sailors and oral history. Presumed at first to be a myth, SCP-169 was detected in 19 by Mobile Task Force Gamma-6 during an investigation of paranormal activity around an undisclosed archipelago. During Gamma-6's investigation, Dr. Gamma-60912 
discovered the archipelago to have moved at least three kilometers from its original location. Though initially said doctor believed this motion to be due to unusually quick continental drift, a reconnaissance mission performed by the USS revealed the archipelago to be the protrusions of rock-like plates, covering an enormous organic mass. The Foundation was brought in immediately to begin threat management. Dr. Gamma 60912 and Dr. Gamma 60421 estimate SCP-169's body length to be between 2,000 and 8,000 kilometers. The creature is thought to have existed since the Precambrian era. No other specimens have been sighted. Almost nothing is known about SCP-169's habits, such as its reproductive capabilities, if any, food source, and nesting area, if any. Research regarding SCP-169 is pending approval. The archipelago known as the Islands have historically been uninhabited, though claimed by in 17 Upon handover to the Foundation, their presence was evacuated on the pretense of rising sea levels. Though the archipelago has remained above sea level for several millennia, any change of depth by SCP-169 could result in the disappearance of the entire archipelago. SCP-169 moves slowly, less than one kilometer per week, but seems only to be adrift. Its method of propulsion is unknown. Regular seismic tremors seem to indicate breathing about every three months, causing minor shifts in the island's terrain, suggesting that the creature is probably dormant. Information Suppression The USS was scuttled with all hands immediately after the discovery of SCP-169, with the permission of the American government. The public is forbidden from entering the archipelago created by SCP-169, due to the conveniently large number of resident endangered bird species. As indicated above, satellite footage is to be doctored in order to suppress knowledge of SCP-169's movement. NASA is currently cooperating with the Foundation in keeping the existence of SCP-169 quiet and is currently permitting the Foundation use of their satellites for photographic use. Addendum 0-20 In 1990, the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, an American scientific agency, unaffiliated with and unaware of the existence of the Foundation, detected an ultra-low frequency underwater sound emanating from an undisclosed location, approximately kilometers from the southwestern coast of South America. Despite the best efforts of embedded agent IA-1522, news of the sound leaked to the media, receiving significant media coverage. Foundation analysis concluded that a massive underwater organism was the source of the noise, and SCP-169 was hypothesized to be its source, as its head is well within the possible locations of the rest of SCP-169. The sound confirms Gamma 60421's hypothesis that SCP-169 is gargantuan in size. Future efforts by scientific or civilian teams to determine the source of the noise must be stopped by any means necessary. Item Number SCP-153 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Specimens of SCP-153 are to be kept isolated in acid-resistant containers, measuring no less than 10 meters by 10 meters by 5 meters, partially filled with sewage and organic material, at Bioresearch Area 12. Every four hours, both the level of organic content and the structural integrity of each container must be checked. Under no circumstances are these containers to be connected to any internal or external plumbing system. Specimens of SCP-153 almost certainly still exist in the wild. Any reports of people mysteriously disappearing from showers and bathtubs must be investigated immediately. Agents must be equipped with infrared and ultraviolet sensors to circumvent SCP-153's camouflage. Specimens should be brought alive to Area 12 if at all possible. Description SCP-153 appears to be a species of nematode, or roundworm, that can reach up to meters in length and centimeters in diameter. Specimens of SCP-153 live in sewers and drain pipes. And while specimens of SCP-153 can live off of most any organic material, they prefer to consume animal tissue. 
Specimens of SCP-153 excrete a highly acidic substance, similar to data expunged, from their mouths and gullets, and they have the ability to camouflage themselves, both outside and in. SCP-153 has developed a hunting technique, where a specimen will swim up a shower or bathtub drain, dissolve the drain cover with its acidic saliva, and camouflage its gullet to look like a standard drain. Shortly after a human enters the shower or bathtub, the specimen data expunged back down the drain, leaving almost nothing behind. This entire process usually takes less than a few seconds. Addendum 153-01 Specimens of SCP-153 are to be kept isolated from each other, except under controlled breeding conditions. Dr. Kovalanskaya Addendum 153-02 Incidents in suggest that specimens of SCP-153 have started attacking people through sink drains, toilets, data expunged. Researchers are investigating how such an apparently simple animal can develop such relatively sophisticated hunting techniques. Addendum 153-03 Dr. Kovalanskaya has received approval to start a breeding research program with SCP-153, with emphasis on genetic engineering. The program data expunged, as well as a potential method of organic waste disposal. Addendum 153-04 A controlled release of SCP-153 instances has been proposed, as a potential containment method for stalling the spread of SCP-2717. Approval pending. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.